I was uh, born in Montreal, Quebec. And uh, I left Montreal when I was very young, around 10 or 11. Moved to Toronto. Uh, lived there till I was four here, till I was 14. Uh, moved to Florida and uh, lived there about 12, 13 years. About 12 years ago, I got a job in Tucson, Arizona. So I drove from Toronto to Tucson and I was staying in my boss's house but he wasn't there, he was in Canada. It was a condominium townhouse, you know, with an upstairs and a downstairs. My life at that time, I think, was pretty normal. I was, you know, trying to, uh, recently divorced after five years of marriage, so trying to find my path alone again, you know, working and trying to make a life for myself, uh, same like anyone else. Be careful what you wish for. We've all heard the old adage, but how many of us have lived the results of wishing for the wrong thing? I am Lawrence Chow. Today in Ghostly Encounters, we look at the case of Brad Powell, a man carving out an ordinary life. In the midst of that, Brad will have what he thinks is a harmless, almost ordinary paranormal experience. But Brad will wish for more. And as a result, he's about to be plunged into a year-long odyssey of terror. The second or third day, I noticed that the lights would flicker on and off, particularly this one hallway light in the entrance to the condo. I would look back and say, oh my goodness, what the heck's going on here? The TV would flicker and terrible reception, even though we had cable TV. So very often I heard popping sounds and interference with the TV and stuff like that. I suspected that there might be some sort of presence in there because I was always open to that kind of thing. So I, I just assumed that's exactly what it was. And, and then as time went on, I realized that there was much more to it than faulty electrical. So I think that was really the very beginning of it trying to attract my attention as best it could. began to attract my attention, I decided maybe I'll try and communicate with this entity and get it to do things to prove that this indeed was really happening. I said, well, you know, if you're really here, why don't you move the chandelier from left to right or right to left? But it was so subtle and so gentle the way it would move the chandelier that I wasn't sure if I was imagining it or not. And as the communication evolved, I became stronger and stronger. And there was an empty bag on the floor. I uh, asked it or suggested to it, maybe if you move the plastic bag, uh, that um, you know I can fully uh, acknowledge your presence. And it did so, and the bag started to lift up and float. It seemed the more I communicated with this spirit, the more powerful or stronger uh, it could manifest itself physically. It showed itself as a cloud, uh, a misty form, almost like fog with uh, sparks shooting out of it. The cloud was maybe a foot and a half, two feet wide, maybe four or five feet high. I was fascinated by this entity, this energy. I was putting my hand in it, my fingers, to feel it, and to connect with it as well, because at this point, uh, there was no fear. It was neat, it was cool. At that point, there was no question. There indeed was something going on in this house. 
Initially, when it was uh, being nice like that, uh, I, I believed it. I thought it was some kind of guardian angel uh, or, you know, something like that. Something that was pleasant, something that was nice and nothing to be fearful of. That night, I went to sleep and had a nice sleep. And it was the next day that it uh, became very malicious and very scary. Its ultimate goal was certainly to put the fear of God in me. I was thinking when I realized that there was indeed a presence in this house that, wow, this is pretty cool because it didn't show itself in a negative or hurtful or harmful way at all. It just seemed like a cool experience to have. And then the following day, I really knew it was there because it did everything in its power to uh, make me very fearful. That's when this ghost started making the walls appear to be bulging in and out. I was seated sitting on the couch around 10 feet away from the wall. There was one wall that was bulging out. I inquired, is that you? And of course it said yes. It started showing these ugly, mean, evil faces on the wall. When the faces showed up, it was more like 3D actually, but they kind of moved and there were like shadows with it. But then the faces would change a little bit. They started to become very evil-looking creatures, monsters, whatever you want to call them. Very freaky stuff. Very scary. I remember thinking to myself, what am I going to do next with this situation I've gotten myself into? All kinds of things raced through your mind. It was horrible. There's no question in my mind that that did indeed occur. That was the beginning of, uh, of an onset of uh, total panic and fear. And the more fearful I became, uh, the more uh, malicious it became. It would also physically attach itself to me when I was trying to sleep. It didn't feel like an actual human hand on me when I felt its presence, but I did feel a pressure that might be the equivalent in the weight or the firmness, along with goosebumps, terrible goosebumps, and I just knew it, it was this thing on me, and it was a very uncomfortable, quite a horrible feeling. I actually uh, called a friend and she told me, you know, a couple of things like put salt around the perimeter, the inside perimeter of your house and that helps keep them out, as well as burning sage uh, I was recommended to do. Those things didn't seem to work. This went on in the house for about a week, but that week was a very, very long, hard week. And uh, I got to a point where I couldn't take it anymore, and I packed my bags and left. I had to quit my job. I hopped in my car, drove from Tucson to Florida. I felt safe in Florida because I used to live there. When I was in the car, I could feel this spirit on me, again, with the goosebumps and the pressure as well. It was always there. <sighs> When I went to Florida, I decided to get a job thinking that I could cope with this thing. I was actually living in a motel at the time. It had an air conditioner in the window. I barely slept the whole time I was 
in Fort Lauderdale uh, from the time I left Tucson, Arizona. Um, I had many, many sleepless nights, paralyzed with fear uh, under my blanket uh, uh, until I would just pass out from sheer exhaustion. One night I was in the motel room. It was in the evening around six o'clock. I'd just gotten home from work and I hadn't slept in weeks. And I was so exhausted, I knew it was there, but I said, no, I just got to pretend it's not there and doze off because, you know, when you're in that state of mind, you need your rest. Things get worse when you're not uh, resting properly. I was just dozing off and I heard a popping sound in the room. It was a fairly loud popping sound. I opened my eyes, and the curtains were completely engulfed in fire and flames. It was definitely trying to kill me. I got a job in Fort Lauderdale. I was actually living in a motel at the time. And uh, I came home from work and I was just completely exhausted. I, I needed to rest. This ghost followed me to Florida. Every night it was there with me when I was trying to sleep, just trying to make my hell a little bit more hellish. But I said, no, I just got to pretend it's not there and doze off. And I heard a popping sound in the room. It was a fairly loud popping sound. I opened my eyes. The curtains were completely engulfed in fire and flames. And there was a fire coming from the carpeting up the wall and up the window of the curtains and up to the ceiling. And the, the room was completely, instantly packed with smoke. I grabbed my things out of the room with the fire still going on. And this is all a matter of seconds. And then I ran right back in and put the fire out. Looking back, had I fallen asleep, it, you know, who knows what would have happened. It would have certainly been a deep sleep. There's no question uh, that this thing started the fire somehow. This entity was definitely trying to kill me. And uh, at that point, uh, I knew it was time to check out. I needed to be alone. I realized that uh, I needed to focus all of my energy uh, on trying to deal with this and cope with this and to get through it. And that's when I decided to go to buy a tent and a sleeping bag and uh, go camping. I quit my job and uh, I drove near Naples, Florida on the West Coast a state park and I camped out in the swamps which was very hard very very hard to do well things changed for me because I had very little money so my priorities changed and that was eating making a fire when I was uh, camping out it felt like it was always very close This ghost constantly, persistently, dozens and dozens of times would uh, try to attach itself to me. And sometimes it succeeded because I was still not fully understanding of how to maintain that barrier of it completely, at least physically off me, if not around me. I knew it was this energy, this entity was, was in complete control of what was going on. I was just completely lost. This spirit was doing everything in its power to make me go crazy and it very nearly succeeded. 
I was feeling very suicidal because I was unable to cope. I was completely helpless. I couldn't reach out to anyone. I felt that my family would not understand or my friends what I was going through, and I chose not to tell them as a result. I didn't feel like I was an outcast from society. Uh, I, I was cognizant of the fact that I put myself in, I guess, a self, self-imposed exile uh, in but it wasn't really an exile. It was just what I needed to do to cope and get through what I was getting through. And people, under times of trauma and stress, people do diff different people do different things to cope, and that's what I did. Eventually, I went back to Canada, drove back to Canada, here in Toronto, and I was staying with one of my brothers on his farm. And one night I was lying in bed. And I felt this ghost once again trying to do me harm. But this night was different. By then, I was also very suicidal. I needed to figure out a way to get through this with my sanity intact. So eventually, I drove back to, to Canada and stayed on my brother's farm here in Toronto. And one night, I was lying in bed. ghost once again trying to do me harm but this night was different I had enough and I was tired and I yelled out F you get the heck out of my life I'm done finished and I was very angry just angry at myself in the situation and a year of torment a year of hell with this thing and I can instantly feel a, a change of the vibe, the energy around me. I knew that something big had just occurred. And this spirit actually started to communicate to me in a very real way for the first time, in a nice way. I do remember it saying it was an old man that had died and that it was also apologetic for what it did to me, that it was just he was very angry and frustrated because he was trapped or stuck in a different realm, in our, our realm. And I actually ended up having to console it or him uh, in those last moments. And I told it, now it's time for you to go to the light. It was a little bit scared and I had to coax it uh, or him as nicely and gently as I could that it was doing the right thing by going to the light. And then it went to the light, and it was over. After it left me, my immediate feeling was, wow, I'm free. I felt a little bit of peace, which was very welcome. And I knew when it was over, I knew it was over. I definitely felt more empowered, uh, but uh, the, the sense of freedom I remember most. It felt like that 900-pound gorilla fell off my back, and it was an amazing feeling. It's a good question to ask why I didn't get angry before. I just don't know. I think probably because I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to let go of the suffering that I was going through. And 
I think in life, people choose their own suffering, whether it's unconscious or somewhere between unconscious and conscious. I think we do do that. And I guess that's the suffering I chose. And when I was ready, I was ready. Brad says he wasn't ready to let go of his suffering. Our expert Patty Allen thinks he may have lost his power to do so early on, perhaps during childhood, perhaps in his divorce. Those who intentionally seek out the paranormal, like ghost hunters, have to be emotionally grounded with strong boundaries. She says Brad had to develop those boundaries in order to have the power to get angry, and only then could he put an end to his torment. It's difficult to say why something like that happens to a person. We all have our own paths, and I think that was part of my path. Ultimately, I would say to anyone, uh, if, if they are very interested and they are actively pursuing or trying to experience these kinds of encounters, to be careful. It's OK to explore. That's an important part of life. But please be careful. You don't know what you might get yourself into.